So as you guys know, I've been playing a lot of Pokemon Snap lately, and not only have I been playing the game, but I've been taking the photos out and editing them way, way further than probably anybody should spend time editing a photo from a video game, but I have been doing that a lot. I've been posting them on my Instagram. I've gotten a few questions from you guys about how I'm actually accomplishing what I'm doing to these photos. So in today's video, not only am I going to show you how I edit these photos from start to finish, we're also gonna start a photo contest and giveaway and I'll give you all the information about that at the end of this video. What's up guys, welcome back or welcome in for the first time. A Little bit different today. Usually I ask you to jump down in the description and click the link to our Discord. Today I'm gonna to tell you to jump down in the description and click the link to our second channel. We just put our first podcast up over there. We will be shooting a podcast every Friday night live on this channel if you wanna check it out. If not, you can see it over there every week. We'll have all kinds of other content going up there as well, but make sure you guys click that link and get subscribed so you don't miss that. So obviously the first part of getting a good picture out of Pokemon Snap is to go out and shoot the picture. So that's what we're gonna do first. We're gonna pick a spot, we're gonna go find a nice photo. I think I know which one I'm gonna try to get. It's one I've kind of already edited before. We're gonna go try to get a, maybe a better version of that, but who knows? We may find something even better. We'll just have to see once we get out there. All right, so we'll go, uh, let's see. I think I wanna go to the jungle. The jungle is, it's a pretty good spot for photos. Uh, we'll go during the day. I'm honestly not sure what these things are called, but they look like purple leopards. Th those things photograph very well. I think there's one at the end I would really like to try to get a picture of. There's one. Too close, not the one I'm looking for. And something you definitely wanna think about when you're taking these photos is you wanna make sure that you do have something in the foreground and a nice background. I know in a lot of the photos, that the game wants you not to have anything obstructing the Pokemon at all, but having some grass in the front, especially once you go in and do the first part of the edit, is really gonna make the picture look a whole, whole lot better. Got some spotted down here. I don't think these are the ones. They may be. You? Is it you? Uh-oh. Oh, there it is. There it is, there it is. There's our shot. There's our shot, right there. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do is you wanna come here to the resnap. Now, like I said, we had, this is the photo we're gonna wanna use here. Fairly nice the way it is right there, but if you go to the resnap, this is where, this is where the magic happens here. Now, even though I was zoomed in, you can actually zoom back out. You can go, you've got a lot of room to work with here. So, what we wanna do here, kinda find a nice framing somewhere around maybe here. Something like that. So the next step, once you have your framing, and again, you have to remember you don't want your subject in the dead center of the photo. You wanna move them off to the side a little bit to give the photo a little bit more interest, especially with what we're doing here. You wanna be able to see a lot of the jungle, a lot of the stuff in front, in the back, you know. Once we put this blur on here, which we're about to do right now, you want, you want it to show that depth. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go down here to the blur. We're just gonna turn it up. Go to about halfway, and as you can see already, it's messing up the uh, the little uh, the kitty cat there, which is fine. What we want to do is go to the focal point next, and that's going to bring, as you can see there, it brings the cat's face right back into focus. Now we can go back up to focus size, and we can bring that back open a little bit, and that's going to bring the tail back into focus. So there, you got the whole. The whole animal in focus. So that's basically what you want to do in this editor. You don't really need to do anything else. Once you have the blurred background, once you have your subject in focus, you can go ahead and snap that photo. As you can see right here, it's a pretty good photo. I'm not sure if this is the one we're gonna actually go ahead and edit. We may use the other photo that I took because I know it's set up a little bit better for what I'm trying to show you guys. Uh, we'll take a look. I'll let you guys know which one we're gonna edit for sure. But this is the basic idea of what you wanna do in the game. So yes, we do wanna save this. And from here, so after you back out of that, what you wanna do is you wanna to return to camp. Once you return to your camp, uh, you're gonna get the option on the side there. It's going to let you go into the lab. So you go to the lab, then you're gonna to go to your space. Now in there, you're gonna find your album. And then from there, you are just going to, uh, you're gonna take the photo that we just shot you come over here, save to system. Now it's gonna be in your camera roll on your Switch. So you'll have that picture, you'll be able to take it off of the Switch and onto your phone. And obviously there's several ways to do that. You can do it through the QR code that's on the Switch with a camera on your phone, 
or you can just take the memory card out of your switch and put it into your computer and save them onto your computer that way. Now for this tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you guys on my iPad because I know a lot of people don't have Lightroom and Photoshop on their computer, but I actually found another app that's going to take the place of Photoshop and you can get it on your iPhone and iPad. I'm not sure about Android stuff, but I know it's on iOS. So we're gonna be using Lightroom Mobile, basically, and we're gonna be using another app called, I believe it's called Lens Flare on the iPhone. We'll make sure once we hop in there, but I don't think we're gonna actually use that picture. I think we're gonna go ahead back to the one that looked very similar to that, if I can find it here. There it is. So we're actually gonna use this one. It's basically, the same shot. It's just framed a little bit different. And for what I wanna do, I think this one's gonna work out a little bit better. So again, we'll save this one to our system. And now we can pretty much jump back out. All right, so now this photo is on our iPad. And from here on out, I'm gonna be showing you everything that I do on just the iPad here. All right, so now we're gonna just start with basic editing. Right now, we just wanna get it, we wanna get it cropped a little bit better. We wanna get the new Pokemon Snap uh, off of there. So that's where we're gonna start out. We'll go here. Now as you can see there's a whole lot of extra stuff here. For this one I think I'm gonna go ahead and stick with uh, 16 by 9 but what we want to do is we want to get the black bars off the side there. Pull this in just a touch, a little bit more, make sure it's at the edge. So already you can see we have a way nicer looking crop here. We got that out of the way. Okay, and now that is done. Now the next thing we wanna do here is we wanna go in and fix the light a little bit. So open this menu here. The exposure, you can bring it up a little bit. That's, it's gonna help. And the contrast in a photo like this isn't gonna do what it would do in an actual photo. So instead of really messing with the contrast a whole bunch, it's gonna give you a little bit more color, which you can pull up a little bit. Uh, the highlights aren't really gonna do a whole lot. What you really wanna mess with here are the blacks. Pulling the blacks down, as you can see, is gonna give you a whole lot more definition. If I go all the way up here, you can see it kind of washes it out. But down here, you're getting a ton of color back. So that's where you wanna be. You wanna bring all the color back that you can. Mess with the whites a little bit. That'll, that'll bring those up just a touch. Now the color, this is where you're actually really gonna sell the photo. Because as you've seen with some of the other pictures that I put on my Instagram. Some of the other photos that I put in my last Pokemon Snap video, you can see there's sun flares that I've added in a lot of them. But to make those look right, this is where it starts. This is where you're gonna make those believable. So obviously if the sun's down low, that means, you know, it's afternoon, which means you're not gonna have a bright uh, daylight coloring. It's gonna be more of a warm color. That's what that's what happens in the evening. You know, it gets, it gets a little bit more orange. So we're gonna try to play off that as we edit this and keep that in mind. So the first thing obviously we wanna do here, these these photos come out of the game very cool. So they're gonna be a lot more blue. So I definitely think uh, the best thing to start with here is take the color temperature, slide that over. And you can see right there the difference, just in that little tiny bit. It's really a, really a big difference. It does give you a lot more of a, an evening look. Now you don't wanna to go too far, cause then you know, you're getting out into this territory and that's, that doesn't look natural at all. So. Again, right here is where you started. I'm gonna say about right there. You don't wanna mess with the tint, the vibrancy. Honestly, you can kind of bring it down just a little bit. Uh, it's gonna take some of the uh, the brightness out of the colors, but it's also gonna make it look a little bit more natural. So bring the vibrancy down just a little bit, not too much, because as you can see, you go too much, it starts to get really washed out. You don't want it that much, but you do kind of want it muted just just a touch. Now something else you can do is come in here to the color mix and go straight to the purple and you can kind of saturate the purple a little bit more which will kind of make your subject stand out there just a little bit more. And really quick, if you are using this Lightroom app, you can touch the picture and see how far you've come. If you touch it, it'll go back to the original, uh, original state. So as you can see here, we've come a long way, a really long way already, not really even doing that much. So we're basically done here. There are a few other little things I wanna do. One of them, you're gonna go into the effects. You don't really need to mess with the, uh, the texture. The clarity, you don't really need to mess with that either. What you wanna do is mess with the dehaze just a little bit. Again, that's gonna bring some of the color back, but you just 
barely want to do that. Now, another thing you can do, and this is kind of personal preference, I do this on a lot of my photos, is I'm going to add a vignette just a little bit to kind of, you don't want to go too much. Again, too much, it, that looks awful. But just a little bit to darken the edges, it kind of brings your eye to the middle of the photo, which is where you want it to be. Now, other than that, you're pretty much done here. Again, you can see where we started, right here. It's it's a fine picture, you know, it, it's, it's okay. But here, I think we've come a, a long, long way from where we started. And if you think about it, this is actually step two. We've already done our depth of field in, you know, in the game, in the resnap. So now we're done with Lightroom. We'll go ahead and save that to export to camera roll. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do here is go to a different app that is called Lens Flare. As I said, this is going to be where you really make these things pop. So we'll take our photo, we'll bring it in here. It's gonna want us to, uh, to crop. I guess you could crop here if you wanted to, but obviously we've already done that. So we're gonna start out and we're gonna go to the effects. Now down here, you're gonna see there's anamorphic uh, effects. Uh, spherical, sun flare, streaks. You've got a lot of stuff to choose from here. I am gonna go with this here. I'm pretty sure this is what I used the last time I did this. And as you can see, you can just move it around. It's kind of uh, it's kind of tethered to the center. So you're gonna get those light hits that come through no matter you know where you put it. You can pretty much put it anywhere, but we, we have a, a sun and it's not gonna make a whole lot of sense if it's just, you know, sitting around here on a leaf or, you know, just in the middle of the photo. So what we want to do is actually bring it up to the edge. You need to find a good spot where you can kind of put it on the edge there and it's going to look like it's maybe coming through some branches or something. And right now that looks all right, but we're going to be able to, we're going to be able to edit it and make it look a whole lot better. First thing you want to do is bring up the scale. As you can see here, it gets a whole lot bigger and we're going to actually be able to hide a whole lot more of the sun itself and pretty much just use the flare. Now I'll bring this back down so you can see it here. Obviously it's big. So we'll move it probably more than halfway up. Now as you can see there that already looks pretty believable. It looks like the sun's coming through the corner there. You're getting a little bit of the uh, you're getting a little bit of the rays coming over here right in front of our little kitty here and on the flowers. So we'll keep that there. That's a great start, but there's a few other things we can do to really sell this. We'll go back to the editor. The brightness, I, I don't think we need to mess with the brightness all that much. I think that's pretty much where we want it to be. The aspect, we don't want to mess with too much. So next we're going to add in a little bit of, uh, a little bit of detail just to kind of sell the sunlight a little bit more. So we'll go to our layers. We'll add another layer. We're going to go back to the sun flares here and there's going to be one here called glow dot. Now we're gonna make a few of those. And this may look a little bit weird at first, but trust me, once we put these in here, get them sized the way we need, it's really gonna sell the sun. It's really gonna give the picture a whole nother, uh, a whole nother dimension, really. So we're gonna use these to pretty much show uh, the sun reflecting off different things. Uh, the biggest thing I think the sun should be reflecting off in this picture are these tall uh, flower looking things. So we'll go ahead and we'll put one here on this flower. Now, obviously that doesn't look very good. That's not, uh, that's not sized correctly. So we're going to go to the editor. We're going to take the scale down a little bit. We're probably going to bring the glow down just a touch and we can actually change the aspect of this. As you can see, we can go really wide, which doesn't look right, but if we if we make it a little bit thinner, it looks like it's just sitting there on that little petal. So at this point, we can actually bring it up a little bit bigger, take the brightness up, and now we have a nice little glow on that piece of flower there. So what we're gonna do now is pretty much repeat this process a few times. We're gonna make another one. We're gonna go back, we're gonna go to sun flares, we're gonna go to glow dot. Now, I wanna put one on the very tip of this flower here. Again, we're going back to the editor. Pulling the scale down, we can bring the brightness up, change the aspect a little bit, and it seems to fit right on there. And again, looks pretty natural. We'll repeat this process a few more times here. I want to put one on the back, and right there you can see that one there is really going to sell it. Once we get that one where we need it, uh, I think the brightness could maybe come down a little bit on that one, but the scale I think on that one is pretty, pretty good. But I want to add one more to that flower because it is the main flower. We'll put one up here on the top. Now that's obviously, needs edited. 
bring the scale down, aspect needs to be changed, and then we can kind of pinpoint where we really want it. So now you can see, if we go to the layers, we can take the image off and you can kind of see what we've added here. Like that's a lot of stuff. Doesn't really look right, you know, from from this uh, from this perspective here. But when you bring the photo back, it all just kind of hides in there seamlessly. You can't even really tell it's there. But we're gonna take this just one step further. Uh, this has a few filters, which we're we're probably gonna try one of them out. I'm not sure if we're gonna use that, but I want to go over here to the textures actually first. Sometimes these will work really nice. Sometimes they won't. You just kind of have to just test them and see. But this is the general idea of what we want. If you can see, uh, when you add it and take it away, let me take it away real quick so you can see, uh, that's when it's gone. It really adds just a little bit more around the edges to kind of really just bring all the pieces that we put together, just bring them into one photo. I'm not sure if this is the one we want to use though. Let's try this one. This one's a little bit more subtle. Now again, it's subtle. You can see me bring down the opacity, but with this one, you can kind of leave it up just because it is, as I said, it's very subtle. So we'll leave that. I think we're going to go back to effects and we may have to add in a streak. We have a streak here. This is going to sell that sun. As you can see here, it's, it's tethered to the center, just like the sun flare was, but this is going to really give us more, uh, more of those sun rays coming through. And I think that really, really brings the picture together right there. Now, we're pretty much done here. I do want to check the warm filter because I have used this on a few. And as you see right there, as soon as you click the warm filter, it gets kind of dark. It does look pretty good though, I'll admit. It's a little too dark. We can brighten it back up right here. And I'm, I'm okay with that. We can add a little bit more of a gradient. And as you can see here, we have started out with something pretty basic and turned it into really a, a spectacular looking image. And that's basically how I edit these photos. I know it's complete overkill, not necessary to do it all. But like I said, you can do this several ways. You can do it on a laptop with regular Lightroom and Photoshop. But the idea is generally the same. So as far as the giveaway and photo contest, what I am asking you guys to do, I want you guys to go over to my Instagram. I will have a link to that below. I want you guys to post your best Pokemon Snap photos and I want you to tag me in those photos. We'll probably let this go for a week, maybe a week and a half. I'll take a look at the photos. I'll pick a winner. The prize pack has not been completely put together yet, but I can tell you this, you will be at least, at least getting a controller, probably more. I have a few things in the works and I don't want to announce anything yet because it's not set in stone yet. But again, most of this information will be over on my Instagram once I have the final prize package uh, ready to go. Either way, it's going to be a whole lot of fun to see your guys' photos and somebody's going to walk away with a lot of cool stuff. So again, guys, link in the description to my Instagram. Go over there, follow me there, make sure you tag me in your best Pokemon Snap photo. But that is going to do it for this one, guys. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please leave a like on this video. Make sure you are subscribed. We'll see you in the next one.